Okay, we're just going to run through the installation of the accessory harness into a 70 series Land Cruiser. So there's a bit of a difference in the range of the 70 series. If you've got a 76 or a 78 like this one, um, we're going to probably route the sockets through the firewall and mount them inside the back of the vehicle. Whereas a 79, the sockets are probably going to go on the back of the tray and outside. In that case, in the 79, we'll probably just run under the engine bay, follow the chassis rail to the rear and mount our sockets in a location down the back. Quite straightforward. Um, but we're just going to run through how, if you've got a 76 or 78, how to route the cables through the vehicle. And just run through quickly some of the differences between the two harnesses. So firstly, this one's got enough sleeving on it to protect it throughout the engine bay until we get to the firewall and um, the accessory grommet that will show you how to get this cable through the firewall. Because we're going through there, we've also left the terminals off the end of this cable. So we'll run through at the end of the installation video when we've mounted our sockets, we'll run through how to terminate this cable. So there's no terminals on there just to allow us to slip through the firewall through the grommet there. So let's get stuck into the install and we'll show you how to get this into your 76 or 78 series. Before we go ahead and mount the battery tray for the auxiliary battery, it's a good idea to get the cable through for the accessory harness, just because once we put the battery and the tray in here, we limit our access to the firewall grommet. So I'm just gonna give you a look down there. So you'll see this firewall grommet where the main harness comes through. So here's a close up of the firewall grommet. So that's the main tire harness that we can see in the frame there. But off to the left, we can see that, that little nipple um, for accessory harness. I'll just see if I can get my hand on it. So that's it right there. So we can actually cut the end off that with a pair of side cutters. Um, spray some lubricant in there like WD-40 and that will allow us to put our accessory harness through into the inside of the vehicle. So we'll show you how to go about that part of the installation. So the first step is with a pair of side cutters I've got down in there, we're gonna cut that nipple off. Okay, we'll cut the end off that nipple. Okay, we've cut the end off that nipple. Now we're gonna spray some WD-40 in there just to lubricate it and make it easy to get our cable through. Okay, so now that we've cut the top off of that nipple to allow us access through the firewall, we're just gonna grab a screwdriver, or something sharp, and force it through that hole just to pierce the rubber inside. And then we'll put some WD-40 through the hole and also down the lead. So I'll just go ahead and do that and then I'll give you a close up. That's just allowed, made sure that we've got access to the inside. Then it's a good idea to grab the end of your accessory harness and just spray it with a little bit of WD-40 or some kind of lubricant. And same with the hole that we've cut open. So just spray a little bit in that hole and that should allow us to be able to push our cable straight through to the inside. So we're through. Now it's a good idea to do this part of the installation before putting the battery tray in. Um, just gives us a little bit more access once we put the tray and battery in, we've got reaching over that to get to that point. So it's a good idea if you bought the full kit, put the accessory harness in first, then put the battery tray in and then put the charger in. So now that we've pushed the cable through the firewall, we've come to the passenger seat well. We're just gonna find the cable. We can see it right here. It's quite accessible in this vehicle. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull all of that excess through. If it gets tight at certain points, we can just add a little bit more WD-40 to the cable until it pulls all the way through. So until, until we make it all the way to the heat shrink, the end of the insulation. So we'll continue to pull that through, just spraying the harness as needed. Continuing to pull, you'll see how much easier it comes once you've lubricated that harness. So 
you can see there's our harness length in the area that we're going to install it to the battery and you can see it's come through if you can see it close up you can see the harness has gone the heat shrink's gone right into that grommet making it a good good seal still so now that our accessory harness is fully inside of the vehicle and we've got all the cable excess um, laid on the ground here it's time to remove these kick panel trims to allow us to run the harness towards the rear of the vehicle where we're going to have our fridge so these are just plastic clipped in so if we just get our fingers in behind and just work our way down we're going to feel the clips start to release so once you feel one in the center we can work our way to one end and then work our way back to the other end and I'll show you a close-up of these clips once we get it out. So it's just lifting upwards now with my hands. And you'll see the plastic clips just sit into those holes. Sometimes a clip will remain in the hole and it's just a matter of using a, a pair of side cutters under it, pop it out and just slide it back into its plastic housing. So we'll just set that aside. And the next thing to remove is just the kick panel here. Now there's just one little plastic nut in there which I'll just duck in and remove and I'll show you. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's just that nut. So just set that aside. Once that nut's removed, it's just a matter of pulling this panel towards us. So we'll just put that out and it comes out quite easily. Once again, we'll set that aside. So now that we've done that, we're gonna start by cable ties. So these are the cable ties that come in the clip, in the kit. Um, just under here, under the air cleaner, you're gonna see a wiring harness. That's probably our first point to um, cable tie to. So we're gonna start routing this cable towards the back. So for now, I usually just put my cable ties on loosely for now, um, tie them all up later. And we're gonna just follow existing wiring. There's a fuse box here. You can lift up this carpet and you'll actually see an existing wiring harness. So our main goal is to follow this towards the back. So the best way to do that is we can actually lift lift the matting here. So you see those plastic clips are just holding the matting in and that exposes our wiring harness. So we're basically just gonna leave enough length and just sit our harness in with that one and we can reinsert that plastic. There's another one there, sitting it in with the existing harness. Like so. Once we get to the center pillar in between the front and rear seats, it's a matter, you can actually tuck it under there or we can try and thread it through. Um, which looks like it's going through quite easily. So once you think that you've pushed enough cable in through this end to be around the back position, we'll go and take the back panel off. Same deal with this one, just two, two plastic clips. So we're just getting our fingers in there till we can try and release those clips like that. Same as the front one. If we lift up that plastic panel again, we might start to see our six mil twin. If it hasn't come through, we'll just try and feed a little bit more. You might see it coming. <clears throat> I can see that it is there. It must be just bound up somewhere. There we go. If I can reach under that carpet and feel it. So there it is. So at this point, we'll probably pull all the excess through. So now we've got all our excess in the rear seats. And just going back to the front to make sure we haven't pulled it too tight, that there is slack. Let's follow that harness. We're now into the rear seat position and we can sit it under that plastic clip as well. Now our next goal is to get from the rear seats into the rear storage compartment where we're gonna mount the sockets. And I'll show you our game our plan with this one. So there's a few options. This particular customer has gone for a triple. We can do a custom kit. Our, our standard harness just comes with your choice of two sockets in a housing like this. But we can do surface mount, we can do flush mount, we can do triples, we can do singles. Um, just contact us if you want something special. But what we're gonna do here is mount this facing upwards. Personally, I like the plugs facing upwards. The reason being, once you've got devices plugged into here, they're prone to stay plugged in. They're not sticking out of the wall and the fridge can butt right up against that. It's not gonna damage any of the plugs that you've got plugged in. So I prefer these, but we can do surface mount. So what we're gonna do to get our cables into this area is this is gonna give us great access. 
And this customer in particular, he's going to go get drawers done after we're finished. So we're going to keep our sockets high. Some people put their sockets even into that panel. There's lots of options. There's plenty of cable for you to choose where the sockets go, but we're going to put our sockets there. I can feel up behind there. I can feel that there's plenty of room to get our cable in, drill a hole and come through. But our first step is to get the cable into this area. Okay, so we're in the 76 series today. We're at the rear seat. So this may be a little bit different in the 78 series when you're not into the rear seat compartment. Um, but hopefully this gives you a guide of how to get the trims off a Toyota Land Cruiser, a 70 series. So our next step with the 76 is we're gonna remove this plastic panel to get from the rear seats into the rear compartment. So the front side of this is just gonna pull up. And then this from the seat belt section is just gonna pull away from the vehicle. Plastic clips again, similar to the ones we saw earlier. And that's that panel removed. So that gives us full access up into here. Okay, once we've got that panel off, you can actually see that wiring harness is still continuing. So we've got something to tie to. We can tie our harness along with that and then re reinsert that panel. So for now, I'm just gonna lay our cable in the route that we want it to be. And then I'll come into that rear compartment. So I usually cable tie right at the end. So I'll come around to the rear. Our next mission in this particular case, but this may vary as to where you want the sockets, is we're going to follow that harness and we're going to try and come out in here. So sometimes a snake, if you have an electrical snake, can be handy, but I'm going to try and do it for DIY style without a snake today um, so I'm reaching right in there and I can actually feel that cable already pulling that through so you can see there's quite a lot of excess for what we're doing today so once we've got it to our desired position it's just a matter of cutting the harness to our desired length so now that I've got the harness all the way to the back this is when I'll then tidy up every all the way to the front now by cable tying, reinsert the panels so that I know I've got the exact amount of cable that I need to go into my sockets. So let's go and put those panels back together. So now that we've secured the harness with the cable ties, it's time to put our plastic paneling back on. So if we take notice of the panel we took off, we can see the two plastic clips and we, they're gonna line up with these diagonally opposing holes over the seatbelt catch. So the best way to do this is to sit those holes into position and line them up. Make sure our plastic's sitting in position down here. Once we can see these holes have sat in and making sure that this is actually around the, the panel there. So sit this side into position first. Now I can see that plastic clip is in its hole. I just want to get a visual on that one. So it's gone in its hole now. Once we know they're both in their, their hole, just a little tap with your hand. One, two, and that panel has gone back on. Same with our plastic panels on the kick panel in the driver's seats. So this is our rear one, two clips. We want to line those holes up at the bottom making sure the guard is over the plastic in front and behind it. Now that we've seen those go in, same thing again, just a little tap with our hand and they're locked back into position. We'll shut the oh. door, we've finished in the rear now. So we'll just reinsert into the wiring harness cavity, our new cable. Make sure the white clips are back down. Um, this one, before we put this panel on, at the front, we need to reapply the kick panel. So we're just gonna go, that six mil stud comes out of the body. So the first thing we wanna do is line up that stud. And as we put it on the stud, we wanna make sure that's around the side of the metal there. So now I can see that stud is protruding. I can go ahead and put my plastic six 10 mil screw on and that's gone into position so now that that's in position we can go ahead and put our kick panel back on same we've got four plastic clips in this in the front and we just want to line them up with our four plastic holes here oh sorry our four holes into the body so 
So once I'm down and I can see all four in place, then we can tap from the top. One, two, three, four. And you can hear all of them go into position and that's locked back in solid now. So we've now got the car all back together from front to rear. We know our cable length is right. It's time to cut our cable to length and mount our sockets. So I've already checked, put my hand up there that I can feel there's a metal subframe running through there. So I'm gonna go slightly above that just to drill the hole through for the cable. So we're just drilling through that, that cardboard or the, the side paneling. So basically there, I'm gonna sit my cable. So the cable that I'm gonna need, if I get a, a estimate on that. And at this point, we haven't made the electrical connections up the front. It's not connected to the battery and the fuse hasn't been inserted in the cable. So we are right to cut through that cable. The last thing we wanna do in this is install is connect to the battery. So I'll leave that, we'll go grab a drill now. We'll drill our hole and get our cable through and then we can make the electrical connections to the rest of the sockets. Okay, so now that we've decided where we're gonna place our sockets, reaching up behind, I'm gonna go to spot, decided to go there. I can tell that that's, there's no steel behind there. And I'm gonna use a stepper drill to put that through. So there we go, I've got a little hole into our side panel there. And now I can reach up with my hand and poke this six mil twin out through the hole, like so. so. Yep, we've got pretty good length up there. So next we're gonna strip a portion of this. Now this is our only electrical connection that has to be made. Um, so there's two small harnesses in the kit that loop from each socket. So that's these ones here, and they'll be already already connected on your kit. Um, you'll just have to link to the third one. So what we're gonna do is you'll see a harness like this protruding out of your sockets. We're just going to strip these positives and the negative, just a short distance back from the end. And we're gonna do the same to our cable that we've just pushed through. So I'm gonna use a pair of cable crimpers to do this task, but understand a lot of people probably don't have them. Any like fencing pliers, electrical pliers will do the job. I'll just show you what to do at the end. So you'll see these are included in your kit. Um, what we're gonna do is join these two wires together. So having the insulation matched, the copper matched. Um, one way to know how much to strip is to look at the side of that terminal. You can see the steel inside there. Um, so we just wanna crimp we just want to strip basically enough. So twisting those two together often helps to get the terminal on and then twisting the same direction as you put the terminal on. And yeah, so I would use electrical crimp crimpers if you've got them, but if not, we can do the same job with some pliers, just crushing that terminal down. Most important thing is just once you've done it, just give a tug and make sure you have got a good crimp there, good solid crimp. And then you can go ahead and put the heat shrink over if you want to um, just label them positive and negative. So I'm gonna do the same with the negative now. So once again, lining the insulation up, twisting clockwise and putting the terminal on by twisting clockwise will allow all the copper to go in. Once in, crimping with the yellow so you're using yellow terminals we're matching it with the yellow if you've got a pair of crimpers so we'll just go ahead and shrink that heat shrink down that can be done with a cigarette lighter or if you've got a little blowtorch now I'll show you how to put the electrical terminals onto the back of the plugs now the easiest way to do this um, is by releasing these plastic nuts. It just to, makes it easier to get the terminals on. 
So we'll start from this end, the large end. We're gonna go onto our angle fridge socket there. So on the back of each of these sockets, you'll see it's marked negative and positive. So we wanna be sure that we get that right. So firstly, negative, our black wire to the negative. Let me go and put that one on. And our red wire to the positive. Good idea to triple check that. If you do get that wrong, it can damage whatever you plug into. Once we do have that into position, we can redo that collar up and I'll bring the terminals right into the housing. Get that collar up nice and firm. So then we can go down the line, almost like a daisy chain. We're going to undo this collar, allow that socket to come out, so we can easily see positive and negative again, and make sure we get our red terminal onto our positive. And the next black terminal onto our negative. And then we can go and insert that back and do up our collar. So we've got an angle fridge socket there on this particular instance. We've got a 12 volt socket, just a cigarette lighter socket. And the last one is gonna be dual USB socket. So once again, undo the collar. Push that out, check our positive and negative. Negative is on that side. And our positive is on that side. And holding pressure on the front again, drop the collar. And then we can push the excess just inside so that it's all incorporated inside the housing and we can go and secure that up into position. So also included in the kit is a couple of different screws. You'll have a couple um, black ones to go into softer material. Um, there'll be some other screws for metal that have um, teeth that will actually drill themselves through metal tech screws. So in this case, we're going straight into a soft material. We're gonna use the black ones. And I'm gonna sit that right about there for him. Good idea before you screw or drill anywhere, I've already checked, but just make sure you have checked behind there and you know that there's nothing, you're not gonna drill into anything soft or important. <laughs> right, we'll put our next screw in. <clears throat> and it's a good idea at the end too, just to have a feel up there once again and make sure you haven't, make sure everything's out of the way and secure. So now we've fully installed the harness, it's time that we can go make the electrical connections up the front, plug in the fuse holder and check that we've got power down here. Okay, so now that we've finished at the back with the accessory harness, it's time to finally do the final thing, which is making the electrical connections up the front. So you'll notice this is labeled auxiliary battery. So we're just gonna go to negative and positive of the auxiliary battery. So we'll just start by undoing these terminals. one at a time. I'm going to do the positive first. So it can just go over top of our BCDC kit. One thing to bear in mind at this point, it's good to leave the fuse out. So you notice we don't have the fuse in yet. That should be the last thing we do. So once we've made these electrical connections, Ok, 
Okay, so now that they're finger tight, we can go and do them up. Starting with the positive. And the negative. And using one of the cable ties supplied in the kit. We'll secure this fuse holder so that it can't move around. And then also secure our harness to the battery tray there. Another cable tie on that rear arm of the battery tray. So we can get another cable tie down on that same arm but down the bottom. And then we're pretty much secured all the way to where it goes through the engine bay into the interior of the car. Cut the ends off our cable ties. So now that we've fully made all the electrical connections, down the backs all terminated, We've made our electrical connections on the battery. Now it's time that we can plug in our fuse holder and check that our sockets work. Well, if we've got a USB socket, it would light up or a voltmeter would light up. If we've got cigarette sockets, we can plug our fridge in, make sure it turns on and operates. So now that we've put the fuse in, we should have power down the back. So if you've got a USB or a voltmeter in the option that you've selected, um, you would see that they would light up straight away. I'm not sure if you can see, but We've got power, we can tell we've got power. There's a blue light in the USB and they will operate. If you've got cigarette sockets or angle socket in the selection, um, easiest way is probably just to plug in your device and see if it works. So we're just gonna, we've got our angle socket at the end here and we're gonna plug our angle fridge in and just test it as fridge works. Doing up that collar. So there we go, we've powered up the fridge, set to five degrees and I can feel that it's running. You might even be able to hear that. So there we go, our accessory harness is all wired up and ready to go. Ready to fill it full of beers.